All right, the situation in Afghanistan. A new U.N. report saying the insurgency is spreading and getting worse. Taliban attacks on the rise. And today a bomb killed three NATO soldiers in the eastern part of Afghanistan. Nine civilians were killed when another bomb destroyed their bus in a southern province. What does any of this say about the future of NATO operations there, U.S. operations? Joining us now from Washington is the Afghan ambassador to the U.S., Saeed Tayeb Jawad. Mr. Ambassador, it is good to speak with you once again. Uh, since we last spoke, reports tend Thank to you. indicate that the situation has gotten worse. Do you agree with those reports? Yes, I do agree that the violence in Afghanistan is increasing. And the reason for the increase of the violence is threefold. First, in the past six years, we never had adequate number of security forces, combined Afghan and international security forces, on the ground in Afghanistan. Second reason is that we, as the Afghan government, never received adequate resources to provide protection and services to our people. And third, the issue of the operations of the terrorist camp on the outside border of Afghanistan continue to be neglected by our international partners. There are some who say that, that the Karzai government simply is not up to this job. There are some who accuse it of being riddled with corruption. Is, is the government itself part of the problem here, sir? No, definitely not. President Karzai is the most ethical, the most hardworking leader that we have had, not only in Afghanistan, but probably in the world. He is put, he's working very hard. He has a very difficult job. He has to coordinate with 40 different partners who are coming with different priorities and different capabilities. He has to meet the expectations of the Afghan people. And we see clearly where the international community has worked with us, such as the building the Afghan National Army. We have succeeded in the area that's been under investment by our partners. Of course, we face challenges. So the accomplishment and the challenges of the Afghan government should be shared by our international partner because it is an international undertaking. Mr. Ambassador, last we spoke, I recall we talked about some of the, the funds that were going there the, to support the government. And as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, part of the problem is you had, had said that many of the funds were earmarked or related to what some might consider pork back here in the Beltway of Washington. Does that situation still prevail? Are you getting the kind of funds necessary? And are they, are they being freed up to go where they need to go? Not all of them. Frankly, you completely recall the situation uh, properly. Uh, we, with the exceptions of our Ministry of Education and Health, the majority of the funds that we received, both from the U.S. and other partners, are being uh, expended outside the channel of the Afghan government and uh, through the NGOs or uh, international organizations. We would like to see more of this money being channeled through the Afghan government in order to build the capacity and also increase the capacity of the Afghan government to deliver services to be present. What happens if that doesn't happen? Well, people will be discouraged uh, in participating in the political process. When people are taking serious risk going out, electing their president, their member of the parliament, and soon they're realizing that the government does not have much saying over how this money is being spent, they will have less incentive to participate in the political process of building a pluralistic democratic society. And this is exactly the objective of the Afghan government and our international partners. And they should realize that in order to do so, they should invest more in building the capacity of the government. And, and the capacity of the government compared to you and I spoke about, I guess, six months ago or so. How has the capacity changed since then? It is improving slightly, but they, since the security challenges have increased uh, drama dramatically, we are more focused now on the security challenges. As part of the efforts to increase good governance in Afghanistan, our president have appointed a new uh, Minister of Interior, uh, a very capable Afghan leader. Uh, we are continue to improve to the extent that we can, uh, but uh, more resources need to be channeled through the budget of the Afghan government. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I'm going to ask you to hold it there for a moment. We have to take a break, but you've been kind enough to tell us you'd stay in and we can continue the conversation. So with your permission, sir, we'll go to our break, come back, continue our conversation with the Ambassador. Uh, plus, as uh, we had promised as well, we do have new numbers from Intel today. Uh, interesting numbers, in fact, and we will be talking to the uh, company's CFO when we come back in just a couple of moments.
back once again, continue our conversation with Afghanistan's ambassador to the U.S., the Honorable Saeed Tayyeb Jawad. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, the U.N. representative uh, today was quoted as saying in his report that he does not anticipate that the Taliban attacks this winter will ease up at all. Uh, it, do you agree with that as well? Yes, I, I do agree. We anticipate an increase in terrorist activities in Afghanistan. Uh, because, as I mentioned, uh, the total number of the security forces are not adequate and the terrorists continue to receive logistical, ideological and financial support from outside Afghanistan. But we are prepared, both Afghan government and the NATO troops are prepared to confront that threat. What, what do you need in terms of manpower right now? How, how many more troops at this point would be sufficient to meet the, this increasing challenge? We need to double the number of the Afghan army from 80,000 to about 140. Uh, we are working on that. So far we have trained only 80,000, which is not adequate. And we will need an ad additional number of troops of about 15 to 20,000 in Afghanistan to confront uh, the immediate security challenges on the short term. On the long term, the solution is to build the capacity of the Afghan National Army in police force. It's more sustainable, it's less expensive. Uh, and the real solution for Afghanistan. We hear NATO, uh, we hear reports of NATO cracking down on what's considered to be the narcotics infrastructure and the world obviously knows about the, the history of, of, uh, of, of the, the drug trade and how it has been used uh, by those who seek to overthrow your government as well. Uh, do you see any signs that that is effective at all in terms of, of stopping insurgents and stopping uh, the Taliban from, from mounting operations at all? We welcome very much NATO's decision in supporting us in our eradication and introduction efforts. This is exactly what we've been asking for uh, to, to get more support in the areas of introduction and also eradication by the international forces. We, we see a direct connection between narcotics, terrorism, lawlessness and, and good governance. Uh, we, uh, we, we will carry out the main efforts of eradication, but our troops need the support of the NATO troops when they carry out their eradication missions. But more importantly, we would like our uh, partners in the international community to help us with interdictions of some major traffickers, to help us with collecting proper evidence, to help us with building the capacity of the Afghan court system and the police system to prosecute them and to punish them because they are really a serious threat for the security and stability and the health of our own people in Afghanistan and in the rest of the world. The last time we spoke once again, you had, uh, as I recall, uh, were of the opinion that most of the Al-Qaeda forces, Bin Laden and the others, were in Pakistan. Uh, do you still think at this point that they're there? And what do you think of, of the Pakistan's government, the new government, and its, its efforts to cooperate or at least to try to hold Taliban forces from moving back and forth across the border? The establishment of the new civilian government in Pakistan is uh, very good news for Afghanistan and I think for the rest of the world. We all should try to support the new elected civilian government of Pakistan. They have a very difficult mission ahead of them. Uh, terrorism in Pakistan is a threat to stability in Afghanistan, to stability in the region, and to security in the world. The new government is committed like we are, like you are, in fighting extremism, but their capabilities are limited. We have to make sure that the Pakistani army support them and work with them uh, sincerely in order to fight extremism in Pakistan and uh, in the region, generally. At this point, the, with the presidential election coming on in less than a month in this country, what, what is it likely to mean for Afghanistan? Oh, I personally, in President Karzai, have met with both candidates. I think the United States is, is very fortunate to have two excellent leaders to choose uh, from. Uh, both of them and their engagement with us are indicating that they will increase uh, their, their support for Afghanistan. Uh, I think, uh, and we are ready to work for, for any of these elected leaders of the United States. Mr. Ambassador, we have to leave it there. We thank you very much for being available to us, sir, and we wish you good luck. Thank you. Ambassador Saeed Tayyab Jawad of Afghanistan.